Morning friends, and welcome to my floss tube and variety show number eight. I paused there for a moment because I couldn't remember what number it was. Pretty sure it's number eight. I'm Emily Williams. I'm here in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and I'm happy to have you join me today. Thanks for watching. Uh, any of you are new viewers, uh, you're very welcome, and I hope you find this interesting. Because this is floss tube, you're going to hear about my cross stitch projects. And because it's a variety show, you might hear about other things I like or I'm interested in, such as quilting, knitting, Legos, books, games, and so forth. So we'll see what, see what happens today. But let me start with cross stitch. I uh, usually, lately I've been showing you Temperature Tree by Stitching Mommy to start with each time. I'm enjoying this and I've made more progress. And so here you can see what I have so far. This is January. I finished the, all the leaves on January. I think I had done that last time. February, March, April branches are done. May is complete. June is now complete. Last time I had not done the last day of June. And we're caught up through yesterday. I was gonna say caught up through tomorrow. That would be interesting on July. And you'll see that the leaf for yesterday is quite a bit darker than the other leaves. And the darker the color, the, dark, the cooler the high temperature. We had been in the 90s and upper 80s in July, which is very typical, and in June. And yesterday's high was 79 because we had a uh, tropical storm Elsa come through, which brought cool, rainy day, about two and a half inches of rain here at my house. So last time I had said, I complimented the designer on the tree, and I had also said I made a mistake in the July branch, but I wasn't gonna fix it. But as I was stitching these three leaves here, where I had not, there was no mistake in this section of the branch, I began to think about how the two branches interrelate, not just in the branch part, but in the leaf part, and thought, I wonder if I'm gonna run into problems with the leaves fitting in either the July to June intersections or the July to August intersections. So I went ahead and stitched the August branch. And after I sort of looked it over, I realized I could have figgle, figgled, fiddled with the placement and size of the leaves in order to make it fit without fixing the July branch, but it was just gonna be easier to just take out the top section. I think it was from about here on up, I took out and restitch it. So that's what I did, and then I caught up on the leaves. And I'm, again, enjoying that. I appreciate the care with which Sarah Hughes, the designer, Put, put that whole thing together. Very, I recommend this. She has some other temperature projects if, you, if you're interested in doing that kind of a project. Under the Roof of Blue Ionian Weather. I had mentioned before that uh, I'm interested in this particular painting because it hung in my house as I was growing up over the piano. And I found a picture, not from my growing up years, but from a few years later after some, after the wallpaper had been updated and things, but the painting is still in the same place, or the print, I should say. It's not, we don't have the original painting, but I might insert that picture in this video. But here is my progress, and I am almost all the way over to that last vertical grid mark, which marks 100 stitches from the left edge. I'm gonna work down there in that lowest curve of marble a few more, a day or two, probably. And then I'm gonna start moving up. And so it's great to see this kind of progress. I'm actually 18% done, just over 18% done, or 13,000 stitches out of 72,000 stitches and I also am caught up on the Tour de France challenge in the Full Coverage Fanatics Facebook group. 
uh, through yesterday's stage of the Tour de France. And interestingly, I'm watching the Tour de France on television every day. I'm not watching it. I mean, we record it and I watch it later because I don't get up at seven in the morning to watch it or whenever they start it, whenever they start the coverage. I'm not an early bird these days. Retired, retired life, what is that? Do you do it this way? Retired life. Um, I've been very much enjoying watching the Tour de France. The scenery is spectacular and the race is quite interesting. The tactics, the uh, personalities, um, and the amazing, that these people can ride their bicycles for 100 miles a day, day after day after day is amazing, and more than 100 miles. Today's stage is 137 miles, I think, 220 kilometers, which means 220 stitches on that piece. But anyway, I'm enjoying that. You can count that as part of the variety show that I talked about the Tour de France. Uh, next thing I want to show you is Salute to Abigail, Blackbird Designs. Here's a picture of it. It's in this book, Sweet Land of Liberty. Um, and I worked on it last weekend, the holiday weekend, because it was Blackbird Design Weekend Stitch Along, BBD Weekend Sal. And so you can see that I made quite a bit of progress. I um, did these three flower motifs here and the flag with the bird and I finished this border down to the corner. So uh, I may or may not pick this up again before the first weekend in August, which is the next BBD weekend, Sal weekend, the first weekend of each month. It sort of depends on what my mood and all, but it, when I do pick it up again, I'm going to finish the border, make it meet and hope that it does. I'm pretty sure it does. For sure, that'll be the next thing I do. And then I'll keep working on, there's a couple more small motifs and that giant pot of flowers. Let me show you the picture again. That giant bouquet in the middle. So I'll finish the border to make it meet here. And I'll, you know, do some of these smaller motifs perhaps, and I'll start this big, Thing of flowers. This other flag is nice too. I really love the detail. This flag has 13 white stitches in the blue field. I mean, it just looks like it's a circle of white stitches, but there are 13 of them. It's not just a random number. So I appreciate the detail in the, uh, in the design. And I'm enjoying stitching on it, and it was fun to stitch on it on the patriotic holiday weekend of 4th of July. So those are the three things that I have worked on and uh, in the past since I last recorded, just over a week. I think I recorded last Thursday. And I think last week I was kind of babbling. I'm going to try not to babble today. Hopefully I haven't already babbled. Possibly I have. It happens sometimes. But I wanted to show you uh, a blast from the past. This is a full coverage cross stitch that I finished years ago. I really, I enjoyed working on this as I recall, and I love it. Um, I just love it. I enjoyed the curtains and the, all the, uh, there is backstitch, quite a bit of backstitch in it, but every part of it I enjoyed working on. And the, it comes from this book called A Summer Stroll by Douglas Greer. And you see it's this one. And in this book are some other designs. Here's another house front. And that one is called um, da -da -da, Backstreet Detour. And then another one, another house front is this one which is called On Broad Street, I believe. Oh, Below Broad, and this brick front. Again, these have quite a bit of backstitch, which really brings them to life. I'm, I'm, in most cases, backstitch is really important and it helps. 
And you see there's some other designs in here as well. This is an old book. In fact, way back, it cost $6. So you can see how old it is. It is still available. I've just looked it up. You can get it on eBay, some Etsy de-stashing type sites. You can still get that. I enjoy that. But in that era, I really enjoyed doing um, full coverage, which I still do. And I bought this pattern called After the Rain. The uh, artist is Linda Myers. And this one called Autumn at Sinking Creek, again by Linda Myers. You can see it's the name of it up there. And if you, I put some information about this in the description box, but if you need more information, you can pause the video and scrutinize it. And I was going to do these. Um, they're fairly large, you know, they're about uh, 17 by 21 at, no, I'm sorry, those are the size of the prints. I don't know how big they are. They're not small. And they're, I'll just show you, they're, it's hand-drawn charts. I won't show you enough to give away the design. And it's not numbered, you know, it's gridded, but not numbered. And I'll just say, okay, it says on 14 count, it would be 11 and a half by 15. It's a lot of stitching. And one of the reasons I never worked on this is because I don't like how this part of the driveway looks. To me, that looks out of perspective. I really like the, the colors and the, the overall look of it. I just don't like that. And in this one, I think that it's all, perspective-wise, I think it's all okay. And I like the way the reflections in the water work, but I haven't been inspired to cross stitch a rundown barn recently, given all the other options. So I'm not sure that I'll ever work on these. And it's intimidating to think of working on a hand drawn chart also. So I'm not sure what I'll end up doing about that. I may end up giving these charts away. And I also want to show you. So in the, what I've figured out as people talk about their projects, they have things they want to start. They have things that are kitted, which means they have the fabric and the threads and the pattern all together, ready to go. They have works in progress, which are things they have started that are not finished. And then they have another category, or two, maybe two more categories. One is called time out. So a project that they were working on, they've made quite a bit of progress on, but they, for some reason, came to some sort of a halting point, a brick wall, uh, getting bored with it, uh, made a mistake and can't, don't want to take the time to figure it out, whatever. Aren't sure they like the fabric choice that they made. They call that putting that project in timeout. I think that's a brilliant concept. And I, this next project that I'm about to show you, I thought was a project that I was just putting in timeout, and maybe it is. This is Noah's Ark. You can see what it's gonna look like. This is from uh, Cross Stitch and Country Crafts magazine from 1992. Is that right? Yeah, Cross Stitch and Country Crafts, December 1992. It's, uh, I'm stitching it, I was stitching it. I can't say I'm currently stitching it because it's in timeout, if not, permanently. On 28 count Lugana, and I, you see I've done, you know, maybe a third of it. It is meticulous, and I feel like I've done a very nice job so far. There's a lot of back stitch, there's a lot of fractional stitches. It's three strands of DMC because there are some two plus one blends in it. And I've done all of the back stitching. I have not done the couching and there's some lazy daisies and things like that. And of course I have not really gotten into the alphabet part, but I, I just think it's, it's gorgeous in terms of the detail and the 
cuteness and the intricacy of the animals and Mr. and Mrs. Noah and so forth. But I'm halfway through the raccoon and I just decided I'm sick of trying to discern the fractional stitches. It's just hard and so I put it in timeout about two months ago. Hmm, am I gonna get it out? I don't know, I think I'm gonna just not worry about it for now. I may still finish it. Um, I think that once I get done with the animals and I'm into the letters of the alphabet that go around the edge, I think I'll be fine. So maybe I just need to assign myself one animal a month and give myself three or four years to finish this. Although I think if I got, I mean, I'm, I don't know. I have a third of the animals done. I don't know. I don't know. It is. What, what do you think I should do? I'm inclined to put it in timeout. And then that brings me to my t temptations that I mentioned last week whether I was going to start, especially the Flea Market Flowers by Lori Holt, which I showed last week. Um, here's what I decided. I decided that I'm going to get caught up on Temperature Tree. And by caught up, I mean all of the leaves stitched for February, March, and April, and be current with the leaves in whatever month I do those three. I think it'll be probably this month. I'll be caught up. And then maintain stitching one month ahead on the branches. So I have August branch done. When August starts, I'll stitch the September branch, so forth. So that I can maintain my original thought, which was to complete that on January 1st, 2021, once the high temperature of December 31st, no, January 1st, 2022, once the high temperature of December 31st is known. That, and so that's my goal on that piece because I kind of think I might do another temperature piece next year. So I don't want to be behind on this year. But when I have caught up on that one, I will start flea market flowers um, because I really do want to do that. I think it's pretty and I think it will be fun to stitch. But I, there are people on my, that I watch on YouTube who I very much enjoy, Saltbox Stitcher, for example, and um, Candace Kay, I watch her, and Stitching Mommy. Those are three YouTube channels that I watch every time they put something out. And uh, Colette on the highway stitcher I think I'll put that in the description box they have dozens of whips works in progress I think I have not counting the Noah's Ark I have five I just don't know that I would feel comfortable having more than six because I would think that I would never get them done and I'm 63 years old, I'm not gonna live forever. I am gonna live forever. I am gonna live forever thanks to Jesus Christ and the eternal life that those who believe in him are promised. But in this earth, I'm not gonna live forever. I'm pretty sure that I'm not gonna be able to take my cross stitch with me into heaven. So if I do work on cross stitch in heaven, it will be brand new projects. It won't be these projects. How many of these unfinished projects is realistic? That's really what I'm wondering. So that's my plan is to get caught up on temperature tree. That's an incentive to get caught up, which I'm already incentivized because I'm enjoying working on that. And I think it's gonna look fun. It's gonna be fun to have finished it. So my plans, 
temperature tree, keep going on under the roof of Blue Ionian weather. The uh, Tour de France ends on June 18th. So I have about 1400 stitches to do before then. And uh, probably I'll pull out the Talavera tiles, Talavera project, linens and threads, uh, mystery stitch along and keep working on that. I'm behind on that, but that's okay because I'm giving thought to colors. I'm not jumping in uh, as soon as the new month's pattern is released. I'm two months behind. I haven't done June or July was just released, which is uh, part of the design, border design. And time is up, folks. So guess what? This floss tube and variety show was all floss tube. It was all cross stitch. It was some blast from the past. It was a little uh, side note about Tropical Storm Elsa. And that's all you get this, this time. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoy these little videos. I enjoy making them. And I love if you leave a comment because then I know you've been here and you've watched something. I appreciate that. And I uh, look forward to posting another video in about a week. I post weekly on Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, depending on how my life goes. So if you don't want to miss one, you should subscribe and click the little bell so that you will get a notification that I've put another video up. Thanks so much and many blessings to you, friends.